uh, welcome to uh, 60 second lecture on electrical machines one and uh, we are discussing about DC machines and uh, uh, in DC machines the uh, armature winding is uh, slightly difficult unlike AC machines windings. But although the basic uh, uh, features of a winding is still present that is each coil will be generally full pitched coil and they will have two coil sides and the separation between these two coil sides will be 180 degree electrical. So, in this simplified diagram you recall that earlier we for a four pole machine, four pole machine we had uh, this simplified uh, winding diagram. I need not go to slot and show the exact winding how it is done provided I know uh, how I am representing a coil in the slots in this diagram. That is suppose seventh coil S7 and its finish is another coil side F7. And I, if at any point of time this coil side S7 is under north pole, F7 has to be under south pole. And after assuming some direction of rotation, generated voltages uh, were shown. And then we found that uh, no matter which coils uh, occupy this particular position, which is presently occupied by 7th coil, whether it is 6, 5, whoever comes here because these things are rotating, they cannot but have this polarity of induced voltage and its magnitude will be also same. This prompted us to think that okay, in that case I will take from the junctions uh, with the help of conducting wires terminate on some commutator segment circular and then I will place fixed brushes uh, in space which will be stationary uh, but in which position where plus plus will be joined where minus minus will be joined negative plus here, plus plus joint, positive plus and this one. We explained this. So, there will be in case of this lap winding there will be four brasses uh, B1 and B4 they can be joined together and four brasses can be will have to be connected. Okay. Then uh, this is not how exactly this is done, uh, last day I forgot to bring this model. So, uh, this portion that is this and this uh, copper strips, these are done by what is known as commutator segment. If you look at it very carefully, the, in the commutator segments, uh, there are several commutator segments and each which is mounted on the shaft. And two commutator segments, uh, this and this next commutator, they are insulated by it is, it is looking like a gap, but there is a mica insulation. Okay? So, that uh, each commutator segment has got its own identity. Therefore, commutator segments, number of commutator segments will be just replica of the number of slots here if they are equal in numbers. We will consider the simplest case when the commutator number of commutator segments are equal to this one. Because in each commutator segment uh, two ends of two different coils will be joined. Therefore, number of commutator segments has to be equal to number of slots present in the machine. So, this, this whole thing will rotate. Okay. And then we will have carbon brasses, suppose this tip is a carbon brass uh, placed in space like this and fixed. Therefore, as it rotates, this fellow does not rotate, this one, this brass, it will touch whoever, whichever coil comes in that position, it will connect that particular commutator segment. 
ensuring that B1 and B4 will remain always positive, B3 and B2 will always remain negative polarity of the voltage, thereby giving you a DC voltage. Uh, and another thing you note that, so these two terminals, so commutator segment later I showed that it can be uh, uh, like this if you go, there will be commutator segments here and each coil suppose S1 and F1 is a coil, its two ends will be terminated here and it will be terminated there. The, the commutator segments uh, where the coil ends will be terminated of a particular coil, the dif difference uh, this, this length is called commutator pitch, commutator pitch. which is denoted by y c. In case of lap winding, it will be equal to plus minus 1, okay, plus 1. So, so, this coil, coil number 1 is connected to adjacent commutator segment. Similarly, coil number 2 will be uh, actually uh, connected between 2 and 3. Okay. So, so from 2 you start these junctions and your 2, 2 and uh, this side it will be terminated on 3. Like this. Then S3, it will continue like this. So, this is called commutator pitch. This is what uh, the difference between the commutator segment numbers uh, of a particular coil, which happens to be plus 1 in case of lap winding. Lap winding. Okay. So, and after we complete it, then we make the winding table as I have shown simplified winding table and from here I know which at which junctions the brushes are to be placed. Everything is known B1, B2, B3, B4 if it is a 4 pole lap winding which two are plus which two are minus brushes are stationaries I will connect them and ultimately get the armature terminal. Okay. Now, uh, and this one, one can complete, I leave it as an exercise up to uh, 16 coils you complete, then put plus minus here, they, they are also and the commutator segment, first coil 1 5 dashed in terms of slot number 1 2, 2 3 like that and then you can determine uh, the position of the brushes much more scientifically. If time permits, I will further discuss on this, but it is not necessary at this stage. Therefore, I now know that field winding a DC machine, I will represent it schematic diagram. I will show the field winding like this F1, F2 and we know how these two terminals are coming and armature I will show it like this, a circle and two brushes. Even if it is a four pole machine only two brushes I will show. Why? Because of the reason that uh, it is the equivalent simplified representation. Okay? Whatever is happening under a pair of pole in the armature conductor, next under the next pair of poles same thing is bound to happen is not not south whatever is happening whoever conductor is present under the next pair of poles same thing is going to happen therefore it is the simplified representation which are called the armature terminals 
a 1 a 2 which are coming from where if it is a four pole machine b 1 before we have sorted got this and b 2 b 3 you have sorted you have got this. Now, if you look carefully between uh, this this one this diagram I will refer to previous to this this is a two pole machine if you join like that you can easily see if you start from b 1 you traverse four coils and you come to minus ok. So, between positive and negative plus this is one parallel path it could be you could reach the negative terminal because negatives are shorted also. So, b 1 another four coils and you reach the negative terminals. So, second parallel path ok. So, here is one parallel path here is another parallel path. Similarly, from this positive terminal if you want to reach the negative you see four coils you reach the negative from this another four coils you reach the negative. Therefore, between the positive and negative brushes the armature circuit all the coils will be divided into as many parallel paths as the number of poles of the machine provided it is a lap winding at least because I have not discussed anything about wave winding that I will do slightly later. So, for lap winding the conclusion is between the brushes there will be a number of parallel paths a number of parallel paths means if the number of poles of the machine is 4 number of parallel paths between positive and negative brush will be 4. If it is a 6 pole DC machine number of parallel paths will be 6. So, this point you please uh, see it can be easily seen from plus to minus if I want to reach because it is this plus plus thing what I am telling I, I will write here a 1 a 1 I have written yeah I already I have written sorry this is the brush a 1 plus this is a 2. So, coming back to now the simplified diagram this a 1 is coming from the junctions of b 1 and b 4 which are positive and this is suppose positive and these are called armature terminals and this is minus. Of course, this plus minus uh, may interchange depending upon direction of rotations depending upon the direction of flux from left to right, but anyway. So, it is uh, if it is an idle machine no point in showing this plus minus, but only a pair of brushes this is how it will be shown. But what I am telling if suppose at any time the armature carries some current here suppose it is carrying some current here suppose it is generator mode it is delivering a current you have connected to the load because it will become a sheet of EMF we will soon find out what will be the expression of that EMF. But the point is if it delivers current what will be the current in the conductor flowing it will not be equal to I A <laughs> why because there are four parallel paths if it is a four pole machine. So, this current divided by the number of parallel paths all parallel paths are identical. So, current will be equally distributed in the parallel paths. So, if the if number of parallel paths if I say if I A is the external armature current
then current through the armature conductors through the armature coil sides or conductors armature conductors will be equal to I A the external armature current divided by A where A is the number of parallel paths parallel paths in the armature circuit in the armature circuit Act that is across the brushes. Mind you, it is important to note this external current and the armature conductor current they are not the same. In case of lap winding, we have seen in case of lap winding. A number of parallel paths A is equal to P equal to number of poles. Is that clear? So, this comes naturally. If it is a two polar machine, lap winding number of parallel paths will be 2. It can be easily seen because we have seen that two pole winding, we have drawn the physical uh, that winding diagram two pole machine. You see, there are only two brushes B1 and B2 to reach uh, from plus brass to minus brass you traverse either this way 8 coils reach minus and another alternative path is this one 2 parallel paths for a 2 pole machine. Hopefully, you have understood this. Okay. <coughs> now, today I will do one very important thing that is suppose I will say I have a DC machine with a field winding and armature winding. I will run the DC machine by a prime mover at certain RPM or RPS. I know we will be knowing the field current which will create a flux along this line and I would like to know what will be the EMF available across the brass of the brushes of the machine across the armature terminals on what factors it will depend and how to calculate that. So, let us try to do that first. So, uh, so consider a DC machine it is the armature terminal calculations are simple in case of DC machine this is the field winding and this is the phi called the flux per pole if you have passed a current I f north south will be created the other side is generally not shown. So, flux is created and this is often called d axis uh, uh, forget about this name right now it is not necessary. So, so this is the flux 
Incidentally, if you look at it, uh, why brushes are shown here, not here, also will be apparent from this diagram. Okay? Brushes will be always along the quadrature axis. Clear? So, so that is why the brushes are shown like this. Okay. Now, I have a flux per pole created and suppose I decide I will run the machine in a particular direction with a speed of n rps rotation per second. If it is rpm divided by 60 to get this number and it is across the armature terminal I want to calculate how it is run driven it is driven by a prime mover because generator as a generator I want to run it may be a diesel engine may be a steam turbine whatever it is. So, prime mover drives it at n rps then the question is what will be the generated voltage that is reading of the voltmeter when no load is connected that is a, our intention is. Okay. First is how to calculate flux I f is known therefore, and I f is d c. Okay. So, this m m f divided by reluctance of the path will give you some flux per pole. Okay. Now, uh, if uh, if flux per pole is known, but I want to calculate the generated EMF. I told you that flux density distribution will be somewhat trapezoidal is not that is what I told. Okay, this is 0, this is space angle theta, this is pi, this is 2 pi and lines of force entering into the stator is suppose south pole anyway B, B distribution under which and this field pattern need not be sinusoidal because here my intention is not to get a very nice sine wave voltage whatever will be the nature of this B that will be the nature of the induced voltage in the coil sides or in the coil because two opposite coils are under uh, two, two, two coil sides are under different poles their direction of rotations are same therefore, these two voltages will be additive we know that 2 B L V will be the voltage across the coil and the value of B we, whichever conductor will be here suppose and this fellow is stationary it is not moving at all so armature conductors if i show it like this with red lines armature conductors are here in the slots Is not and armature is moving suppose from left to right and this field is stationary and suppose uh, this is south pole corresponds to this is north pole then I will apply right hand voltage to find out the voltage induced in a single conductor how to do it this is the direction of say tangential velocity v of this conductor say I want to find out what is the voltage. This is b, uh, this is b, this is v direction of voltage and uh, this four finger this tip will tell you the polarity of the induced voltage coming. In fact, for all the conductors this uh, will be dot dot like that 
for all the conductors this is true they are having same velocity. However, the magnitude of the voltage induced in this coil will be I have to take this b length of the conductor is same perpendicular to the paper into v. The induced voltage in this conductor will be this b length and velocity is same, but nonetheless polarity is same that is what I am telling. So, and similarly you can easily see it will be cross here the polarity of the induced voltage they will be additive. What I will do is this I will start from this that uh, induced voltage in a single coil I will use a better pen I will first calculate induced in a single conductor single conductor is how much you pick up a single conductor what is the induced voltage in it. Now, it may look a bit funny that this conductor will traverse this whole length na as time passes ok polarity remains same, but the magnitude of the induced voltage here here is because this fellow was a little a little time a time earlier was here it has now occupied this position induced voltage has become more b is more then once again it uh, retains that value if it is flat top then once again it is decreasing. Therefore, magnitude of the induced voltage induced in a single conductor is not constant when it is under one pole that is fine, but it is polarity remains same. So, what people do is this ok this conductor is seeing different value of flux density between 0 to pi. So, so, so why not take the average value of the flux density and uh, um, uh, multiply with L and V to get that voltage that is will be absolutely accurate nothing wrong in that. So, what you do you take average value of this B which will be something here B average. total flux what is B d theta total flux divided by this length average value of flux density I will calculate and pretend that the conductor sees all the time B average and multiply with that uh, B average with uh, length and velocity. Now, the big question is how to calculate B average that calculation is also very simple. See if uh, you look at this diagram suppose it is a multipolar machine I will draw it here say 4 pole machine this is suppose not pole this is the south pole. this is once again not pole windings I am not showing on this data we know how to create that this is suppose south pole. Suppose uh, air gap is little so, uh, so, uh, so suppose the diameter of uh, the rotor or the air gap whatever you call it it is suppose d diameter of rotor is equal to d. This north pole will create flux which will come out as we have seen it will go like this. Is it? That is how it will be completing through this other portion of my irons. Yox uh, that is called. Anyway, 
so b will be present here 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 then there will be a if you draw a line dotted line i am showing this portions there will be no flux density perpendicular to the iron because there is it is zero nothing So, whatever total flux comes out from the north pole which I have denoted by phi, phi is the let let phi is equal to total flux per pole total flux per pole in wave bar suppose. So, this flux what will be this length if uh, d is the diameter of the coil I mean uh, not the, that uh, that length uh, this length on the periphery this this length how much will be this length because b I have to calculate I have to divide the total flux per pole divided by area. So, I must know what is the length of this one, this portion. I highlight it with different color. Got the point? Here, this, this, this length is how much? This length will be obviously this length is pi d is the total periphery divided by number of poles if it is 4 pole pi d by 4 4 pole i have shown if it is 6 pi d by 6 so flux per pole and what is its unit its unit is in meter and uh, area through which this phi is acting I mean is present whatever language you write will be equal to pi d by p into length of the machine because this is per perpendicular is not that will be the area curved area we assume ok this is sort of rectangle pi d by p into length of the machine that will be the area. Therefore, therefore, b average in the air gap I can say flux per pole divided by the area through which this flux per pole this is phi total flux all, all the lines of force coming out phi distributed over this length pi d by p into l. So, so this is pi d by p into l which will be equal to phi p by pi d l. What is d? Diameter of the rotor. What is l? Length of the machine or the length of the conductor because rotor length is the coil side length you should remember these are overhang portions. In this portions there will be no induced voltage I should not bother I will be bothering about the effective length of the machine here the voltage will be induced this fellow is rotating seeing different values of flux density under a pole. Although polarity of the voltage remains same when it is under south pole, but magnitude may change because strength of B is changing. That is why it will see sometimes low value of B, sometimes higher values of B, once again back to low value. Therefore, why not calculate the B average and pretend that B average remains constant, multiply with L and V, and you will get absolutely correct result. Nothing. <laughs> wrong in that. So, so, so induced voltage uh, this question mark I can now write it as is equal to 
it will be in a single conductor mind you in a single conductor will be b average b length of the conductor and v the velocity and i can uh, if n is the rpm rps this mind you is the linear velocity meter per second so if it is n then conductors residing here and the rotor diameter is n then velocity in meter per second is nothing but pi d n in one second conductor will travel how much distance pi d is the perimeter in one rotation pi d in one second it makes n rotation so in one second it will move by so much meter per second is not and that is the thing so i will say that induced voltage let it be a bit clumsy i don't mind but let me on this page only so it will be then is equal to b average l and for v i will write pi d n this is the expression for induced voltage in a single conductor we'll continue with with this in the next lecture thank you